Hey guys, Quiv the Filter Geek here and welcome back to the channel. And yes, today we're going to be talking about filters again because I am going to be using my uh, little spectrometer again. Um, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, you can check my previous video. I'll make sure that it's linked to somewhere above there. Uh, but yeah, we're going to use this little thing to qualify some filters that were just sent to me by um, IDAS. We have on the left hand side, or your right, I would say, um, the IDAS H Alpha 6.8 nanometer full width half max UHS for ultra high speed. So, this is an H Alpha filter that is pre shifted for very fast optics. In particular, the RASA um, telescopes are ideal for these uh, filters. And we also have an Oxygen 3 uh, 6 nanometer full width half max uh, that is not set as UHS but will look at the specter of that particular filter and we will see that it's the way that it's built is that the oxy Oxygen 3 wavelength is actually to the left of the uh, available band pass and that means that it's very resistant to fast optics. And what is exceptional about those filters, and this is something that I really wish more manufacturers would do, and I had actually no idea that IDAS did this for those filters. Currently, it's only for those filters that they do this, uh, this process. But with each filter, as you buy it, you get the actual spectrum measurement for that particular filter. We're not talking about for another filter from the manufactured lot we're talking about the spectrum for that specific filter. So you can see this is the spectrum for the H alpha ultra high speed filter. We can see we have the lot number written here and we can actually match it to the lot number on the uh, filter box. And so we get those graphs for both filters, which is great because then I can compare the performance of my little spectrometer against those two filters. Also, I'm not sure whether that is standard or not. I would assume no, but what's very interesting is that IDAS also sent me simulations for how those filters will work at very fast focal ratios. And we'll look at the details of those documents once I'm in front of a computer. So just like last time with all of my filters, I am going to be uh, filter uh, to checking them via this spectrometer. And uh, these days I am not doing any monochrome imaging, so I'm not going to directly test them with my telescope, maybe sometime in the future. At this time it will be purely with my uh, spectrometer. And I, all, I will also put the links to those filters in the description if you're interested. Uh, I looked at the price of those filters. They are considerably more expensive than the 7 nanometer Optolong filters, for instance. Uh, but <laughs> since you get an actual spectrum measurement with each of those filters, that alone might be worth it because then you're sure you're not getting a dud, which in my book, it's very, very important. Anyway, let's go inside and see how those filters perform, or actually, since we have the actual spectrum of the filter measured with a lab a spectrometer that presumably is extremely well calibrated, <laughs> we'll be measuring more than the filters. We'll be measuring whether this spectrometer performs um, as well as I expect it to perform based on my previous video. Uh, so we'll see, see you inside. Okay, we're inside. Let's have a look at those spectrums in detail. So I scanned those uh, sheets of paper that I showed you and let's start with the oxygen three filter. So we can see that for that particular filter, um, we, we see the two band passes are the two wavelengths of oxygen three, the main one being the 500.7 nanometer uh, wavelength. And we can see that it is indeed towards the left hand side of the actual band pass. Uh, which is excellent because then it's very resistant to fast focal ratios while working excellently for slow focal ratios. So just looking at this, you know that this is a filter that can be used with any equipment and it will work perfectly fine. We see uh, multiple figures, uh, but I'll go to them in a moment. First, let's look at the simulation that IDAS provided to me of overall how that filter looks like on um, on different filt on different systems and if we look at a system like the Raza uh, 8 this would be like the darker or like the brighter blue let's say we can see that we'd still get like 90% transmittance uh, which is uh, which is excellent and uh, if we were on an F4 system we get like the 90 whatever 97% 
transmittance if we're on uh, my Hyperstar C6, which would be closer to this one with a large central obstruction, obstruction uh, we'd see uh, again like a very high uh, transmittance of around 90%. This is excellent. And we can see something very similar with H-alpha. This is um, H-alpha. Again, the uh, band pass is offset to the right compared to the target wavelengths. And this is, as I've mentioned in a lot of my videos, because of band pass shift. The uh, higher the angle of the light rays when it hits the filter, the less like if it's not per per perpendicular, but at an angle to the filter, it will shift the band pass effectively of uh, that filter, and it will shift it towards the left or towards the blue, which is why it's called the blue shift. And so we can see here that this ultra high speed filter is built for exactly that purpose. And uh, we can have a look at the, uh, at the actual band pass uh, simulation and in particular if I look at this uh, 6 inch di diameter f2 I think they did specifically for me with my hyperstar setup uh, we see actually a very very high overall transmittance at that uh, for for um, H alpha of like 90 something percent and a more classical Raza would still be like 92 percent this is this is excellent right and these are simulations based on measurements taken for the specific filter that I received. And that's not because I got the filters directly from IDAS. I got the spectrometer measurement of that filter the same as a buyer of that filter would get, which is awesome. Although I don't know whether they'd get the simulations, probably not, probably only the raw measurements. But then you can always compare it to this measurement here, which you know is uh, working great. Now, uh, on these measurements, we can see the measured full width, full width half max for that particular filter, so 6.2 nanometers. We can also see like this uh, lambda zero, which I assume is actually the center of the full width half max. So, uh, which is uh, 658.8, whereas, which is slightly different than actually the top. Uh, like you see, there's the flat top here and uh, my spectrometer will likely, likely uh, find more or less the center of that flat, flat top but because like the band pass is not perfectly symmetrical, I've noticed that the center of the flat top compared to the lambda zero, which is the center of the uh, FWHM, so basically the, the midpoint between this point at 50 and that point at 50, they're slightly different, which is perfectly fine. But that means that when I do my spectrometer tests, I will be measuring everything and comparing everything. So I'll be uh, looking at the center uh, of the flat top, I'll be looking at this lambda zero, I'll be looking at the full width half max, and I'll also be looking at the left part, like, like the left point of the full width half max, and the right point of the full width half max, so we can uh, compare all of that. Now, I don't have like the uh, Excel data, let's say, of the filter, just that printout, and uh, so I had to, uh, to kind of like play it by ear and, um, and like sometimes, sometimes kind of like um, evaluate what the uh, figure would, would be, but enough to be able to compare the uh, official lab spectrometer measurement to my own measurement, which is here. So we are in the software um, that is provided by Goya Lab, the maker of the Indigo the, the spectrometer, which I will have a link to in the description as well. And the green uh, spectrum is the one from the Oxygen 3 filter. The blue spectrum is the one from the H-alpha filter. And you can see you have like, two, like this white kind of weird curve there. This is the first derivative of each of the spectrums respectively and it makes it very easy for me to find like the middle of the filter like where it's at maximum which with my uh, lower resolution spectrometer basically would correspond to the middle of the flat top uh, of the filter and we can also use the peaks on the side of the derivative to find like the borders of the full width half max measure the full width half max and also measure the center of the full width half max um, kind of to, to be able to kind of like compare apples to apples. And uh, overall, overall, let's see the actual results. I have them in a spreadsheet here. I have the oxygen three filter here in blue green and the H alpha filter in red. And I have my measurements for the center of the flat top of uh, the filter. I have like the, the, the left start of the FWHM, the right start, uh, the right end, let's say, of FWHM, the center of the FWHM, and my measurement of the FWHM. 
in light yellow or light orange, as we see here, are values that I kind of had to estimate. So the ones that I measured, I was able to estimate fairly precisely, as you can see here, by like dragging arrows around until they, they point to the right uh, place in the curve. So that's uh, fairly easy. And then those ones, I had to kind of like uh, really look at the printouts. So they're not as precise, but they should be precise enough because the scale of the printouts uh, of the spectrometer measurements that IDAS provided is really like, it's a good scale to be able to have good approximations. Uh, the figures in green are taken directly from the numbers printed out on the uh, on the papers. So the numbers in green uh, basically correspond to uh, to this, right? Lambda zero and FWHM. So you can see for my oxygen three filter, I have the center of the flat top at 501.13. IDAS is more or less at 501.6. So a difference of roughly 0 0.5 nanometers between the measurement, which is pretty nice. Um, and you can see the, th the similar things for left half, right, right, right half, like with the difference of 0 0.5 nanometers. The center of the full width half max, we then see a difference of 0 0.6 nanometers roughly. And, uh, and the, uh, the full width half max itself, I measure six nanometers, they measured 5.9 nanometers. Again, not all of those figures will make perfect sense because I had to like kind of uh, uh, eyeball some of the figures from the printed out charts, but we are really very much in the same neighborhood, right? So uh, my spectrometer, um, even though it is much rougher than <laughs> the lab spectrometer by IDAS, which probably has like a slight, like a measurement window of like 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 nanometers, maybe even just 0 0.1 nanometer, which is completely crazy. I still get pretty good results. And uh, when I, I told IDAS about those results, like their engineer was like, hmm, this is a, a good performance to cost ratio. <laughs> awesome, I take that, take that as a seal of approval for that spectrometer. And uh, H-alpha tells a similar story, except I have uh, less difference between my measurements and what I see in IDAS. So we can see that we get roughly like between 0 0.2 and maybe 0 0.4 nanometers um, differences uh, between my measurements and what I see directly from IDAS's uh, lab spectrometer measurements. Uh, with my uh, FWHM measured at 6 and theirs at 6.2, yeah, whatever, you know, it's uh, it's perfectly uh, fine. And I really, like, I'm really happy that they sent me those filters because not only do they come with those spectrum, spectrometer measurements, again, not just me, anyone who buys uh, those filters will get spectrometer measurements for their specific filter, uh, but also, like, uh, it really confirms that uh, my cheap, still 2000 bucks and more, um, spectrometer uh, performed really well for its price compared to a lab spectrometer that, that should be like tens of thousands of dollars, maybe almost $100,000 depending on the uh, machine that is used. So yeah, uh, I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing. And you know, I had never heard of those IDAS um, single, you know, narrowband filters for monochrome camera. So like single band narrowband filters. Um, and I didn't know they made them and I didn't know they made like uh, an ultra high speed version, which is awesome for Raza owners. This is great. So that means that Raza owners, they now have the choice between better high speed filters, which as you know, I might not recommend until we're sure that uh, reliability issues have been fixed with them. We have astronomic filters that I have never owned or measured, but that seem to have like very good reputation. And then now we have IDAS added to that, at least for oxygen three and H alpha. I don't know if they're gonna do sulfur two in the future. I hope they do, uh, but that's really completely up to them. If uh, uh, because then we'd, we'd be able to do like f a full SHO with IDAS filters. Nah, we'll see in the future. Um, anyway, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for this video. I wanted to share this information with you guys just because like IDAS saw the video with the spectrometer, they were like, huh, let's see how, what the spectrometer is actually worth. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's where I'm coming from uh, here. And it's uh, always nice from IDAS, they're in Japan after all, to send me those, uh, those filter samples. It doesn't mean that I am, I'm not paid by IDAS, right? I'm not sponsored or anything. Uh, they do allow me to keep the filters, uh, which I, I told them I would send them back, but they told me like, oh, you can keep them. I'm not letting that color my judgment because after all, like uh, I haven't tested them under the stars. 
um, I would need to check whether they have like star halos, for instance. Although I think they've managed to get rid of star halos after the uh, uh, with their NBZ filter, so I would expect not. But I haven't tested that yet. And uh, their spectra, their spectrum is is perfect. It's it's perfect for uh, f fast optics. And the Oxygen three really works throughout. You can put it on any telescope, it's gonna work great. And the H-Alpha has both a standard version and a UHS version. And the ultra high-speed version I have seems to be uh, perfect. I, I don't even need to test it under the stars, right? To know that the uh, I will get awesome results on my Hyperstar. Um, although I will need to test it at some point to see whether I get uh, star halos, which hopefully is not. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope, uh, again, I'm, I'm not boring you too much with uh, filter measurements. Uh, if I'm doing so well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll try to be more practical with my next videos. I have some a couple of good ideas. Uh, I don't know when I'll have the uh, ability to actually and the time to actually take uh, put those ideas um, to the test, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be back. <laughs> so with that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.